So in summer 19, uh, one of the biggest trends is uh, over dyed garments. A lot of different washes uh, is something that we've experimented with. Like we have uh, a bubble dye wash, then we have a cold pigment dye, then we have reverse cold pigment dye, and then we have um, crackle effect washes. And uh, so these um, techniques combined with an all over print uh, or some other technique, so like an all over embroidery or something, that is a uh, uh, gonna be that's gonna work for summer 19. Other than that, we uh, think indigos are gonna do really, really well. Um, tencel with indigos, tencel denim fabrics are gonna do really well. So, people are uh, becoming more and more brand conscious. Uh, not only parents, even kids these days, you know, they want to wear something that's branded, they don't want to get something from any local shop, uh, you know, that they are parents or uh, got from. So we think that that's one of the major shifts that's there in the retail segment, especially in the kids wear market. And uh, other than that, uh, kids are also, uh, because they are all online, they are all on social media, they know about the different trends. I, I want to talk about uh, how, ki how parents dress up their girl kids yeah. in the country. It's very loud and then, you know, I think parents think about what they like instead of thinking about what the kid would be more comfortable in. So I think there's something that parents should really think about. They should, uh, uh, you know, realize that less is actually more. G good print, a good fabric is, is something that's going to, you know, look very good on your kid instead of some wearing something that's uh, too heavy for them or something that they will not be comfortable running around it because that's what kid wants to do. They want to play. They don't want to be sitting in one place with a big dress and, you know, so stuff like that. And so that's why they should keep it very minimal. They should, they should go for good colors and, uh, yeah, good fabrics. And they should not get anything that has polyester. Absolutely. Like, especially if there's no uh, good lining inside the garment, I think they should totally avoid it. So I think uh, this year, 2018 onwards, I think uh, it's been declared that being a retailer is, is uh, in the Indian market, is purely a game of survival of the fittest. With the Indian, Indian retail scenario completely opened up to Globalization. You see a lot of Western Western brands coming into the market, uh, doing well, creating a lot of hype amongst the Indian consumer. And uh, within this within this scenario, within this environment, the Indian Indian brands need to kind of prove to the Indian consumer as to why why they should be still preferred over these international players. Uh, the way the way the Indian Indian brands can can grow and uh, grasp a lot of loyalty from Indian Indian consumers is by understanding the sensitivity of the Indian consumer, uh, our traditional values, our culture and kind of creating a relatability with with the Indian customer who who is who is who is quite who who does respond to to something if you, if if a brand offers with, with the sensibilities. Uh, with regards to with regards to uh, fresh revenue in terms of uh, retail, yes, exclusive brand brand outlets are difficult uh, to maintain compared to uh, compared to other distribution channels like the departmental stores or the e-commerce. But again, for uh, the idea of a powerful brand is to protect and ensure that the the exclusive brand outlets are growing, and uh, that that is a good indicator of a growing brand of a powerful brand when when the exclusive brand outlets are managing to be profitable and to generate generate a growth growth story of business on a regular basis so with regards to uh, designs and trends like i said the indian market is completely opened up uh, there's not much difference in time lead time uh, as to how a trend from abroad comes into the indian market now as compared to 5 years ago so so i think it's it's like i said the survival of the fittest it's 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 challenging it's tough but also at the same time if you if you do the game right if you manage manage your work and your team team properly and overall the systems and the store environment then i think that it can be a good space for for any booming brand who can manage it well so uh, so Ginny and johnny has has a fair bit of loyal customers from the traditional indian parents uh, over the last 15 years we have observed uh, that the SEC, AB, and uh, we have we have maintained we have maintained that loyalty from the traditional Indian parents who who have trusted our brand with with quality with quality being our main USP and competency. Uh, also, but with with the whole modernization with the whole young parent and the millennial parent, we we try to convey through our product range 
uh, because I think we have invested quite a lot in the product thinking that we have been developing over the last couple of years and uh, we, we, look to, we look to promote our products on an individual basis because end of the day that is what the tangible uh, asset that is going to go home with the consumer and uh, we, we do believe on the technical comfort, comfort angle of, for, the, for the child. Uh, when, when they buy a Ginny and Johnny garment. So, in terms of competing with the international brands, I think our product is the main main weapon. We got a very strong product and we continue to, to improve, innovate and you know strive in that in that aspect with a little bit of product marketing, a little bit of influencer marketing in the Indian consumer. Uh, that should that should be the right way for us to kind of establish uh, respect amongst the Indian consumer when, when the international brands are challenging us to competition.